In this video, we're going to be going over a setup for a 1990 air drill with a 2630 display. We're going to go over a blockage setup, and we're also going to be going over a basic AMS documentation setup. Um, so everything you need um, in order to start seating, we'll, we'll go over here in the display. So um, we're first going to go over a basic AMS setup. So we're going to go to main menu, lower right. Then we're going to go to GS3. Okay, and there's three uh, buttons that we have to go through in order to document correctly. So it doesn't matter if you're seeding, planting, or harvesting, spraying, whatever the operation. If we go through G, H, and I, um, everything should be set up ready to go. So uh, we'll start in G, which is our resources. So we have to tell the display where we're at and what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to go through, we've got to choose our client, farm, and field. And then we also have to tell it our task. So in this example, we're going to be seeding, so we need to make sure the task is seeding. Um, and we also need to have the correct crop year. So there's a lot more information that you have the option to fill out if you want. But for documentation, these five boxes are the most important. So that's G, our resources. Next, we're going to go to equipment. So we got to tell the display what we're driving and what we're pulling. So up here at the top, we have a machine and we have our implement. So under machine, we have our uh, type as a tractor, we've got our model entered in, our name, and also here on this page are our, are our offsets. The display needs to know where the receiver is in relation to the tractor, in relation to where the drill's at. It's got to have all those specific measurements in there. So before season, go out with a tape measure and measure these specific measurements. So we go to change offsets. It gives you a, a brief description there of where you need to be measuring from. But before you start, make sure this uh, these numbers are correct. Okay, so we've got our tractor filled out. Let's go to our implement. We've got our implement type set as seeder. And we've got our model is 1990, and for this example, we've got a 40-foot drill, and it pre-populated some offsets that are based on our model selection. Uh, down here at the bottom, these are very important. We need to make sure that the implement width and the track spacing are correct. If they are not, it's going to be leaving overlaps or gaps, depending on where it's at. But it will not paint correctly, um, and it will also mess up your rate that it thinks it's putting down. So make sure these numbers are correct. We've went through resources. We told it where we're at, what we're doing. We told it the equipment that we're going to be running. Um, next, we need to go to our documentation, which is the letter I. Up here at the top, we're only putting down one product. If we have multiple tabs up here at the top, so let's say there's two planting and seeding tabs, it is not going to paint or document where we're actually seeding. So we need to go in here to this extra one and remove it. Okay, so there should only be one planting and seeding, and there should only be one new tab at the top. So if you have extra, you're doing something wrong. So anytime you see this little asterisk when you go through the documentation setup, that means that there's something that has to be entered into that box. So for this example, we've gone on our list, we've selected our, our hard winter wheat, and we also have to have a variety. So if we go to hit add variety, you see that little asterisk, that means that there's something that needs to be in that box. Now, it doesn't matter what you put in there, just something just has to be there. So we've gone in, we've added our variety, we have our seed type. We can also, once we do all this, we can go to Diagnostics, and we can go to this drop-down box and hit Recording. This tells us everything that we need to have in order to paint. So we've got our field and our task defined, and we also have our operations properly defined, and we have Yes. So if you've got multiple operations here, and you're only putting down one product, it's, it's not going to be painting behind you. So this is just a way for you to check, make sure you've got everything right. Okay, so that's the basic AMS setup. Next, we're going to go to our blockage. So hit main menu, lower right. 
and load our blockage monitor. Push this F button here at the top. This brings us to our main blockage page. So we'll go through this and explain what each of these boxes are. Uh, up here at the top, this is our half width disconnect for our clutches. These will turn your clutches on and off, or we can hit the rocker switch on our black box, on our right selector box. That will also uh, turn our left and right side off. Um, next, we've got our population. So we can either look at an average across the whole width of the uh, of the cedar, or we can split it apart and watch each side separate. It might be good for some basic diagnostics, make sure everything is the same. As we go down, this gives us the details for our population of our different rows. It's going to scan through here at the top and it's just going to filter through all of our different rows. And we go down, it'll show us a min and a max, so that way you can see a range of everything that's going on. And if you suspect one is partially blocked, you can go in here in this box and you can tell it to look at a specific, a specific row if you need to. We hit this arrow icon here on the right. This brings up our kind of our planner at a glance. So this main horizontal bar, that is our target population. That's what we're telling it to put down. And based off of what the sensors are picking up, it's going to go above and below that box based on what, what those sensors are picking up. This is what most guys like looking at. And if you are above or below a population, we can set it up to alarm at us, beep at us when we're above or below our target. Um, and it's going to show up in red if we exceed that, that given amount. So down here, uh, this is going to be our blockage, so it's going to warn us if, if a particular row is blocked. Show us which ones, if we needed to turn a row off, it's going to have an X through it, meaning sensors down, we turned it off, we're not looking at that, at that particular sensor. Okay, so let's go through a setup. So if we go to G, this is our, our blockage setup, our main blockage setup. First box, our row fail rate. This is the number that if it goes below this particular setting it's going to alarm us that there's a blockage. So 20 seeds per second is more sensitive and then one seed every three seconds is less sensitive. Now the book doesn't give a recommendation for wheat. It needs to be a certain fail rate. What they recommend is go as sensitive as you can without throwing nuisance. So for wheat we're going to start here on 10 seeds per second. And then for our blockage pattern, we're, if we're using both ranks, we want to turn all of our rows on. In a situation where you would be only using the front rank, say for beans, you would choose, depending on which rank you're using, you would turn off half of your uh, blockage sensors. That way, it's not looking for them, it doesn't beep at you. For this example, we're going to be using both ranks. We want every row on. You want to turn off a particular row, so you're having problems with the sensor, you click on that, there's an X through it. It's just telling the system we're not going to be looking at any information from that particular row. We go to our blockage setup tab at the top. This is where we need to tell it the member modules, each member module on the toolbar is going to have a specific serial number. From the factory, they're sequential. If you had to replace a particular member module, this is where it would go and you'd have to tell it the specific serial number so it knows which, which blockage module it was and how many rows per that particular tower. Unless you have problems, this isn't usually something you ever have to mess with. But just so you know what it is, if you needed to switch blockage, so if you were uh, having per suspecting a problem with a particular mem member module and you wanted to swap it with its neighbor, you'd have to go in here and you'd have to tell it rows 1 through 2 are actually this particular serial number. If you don't do that, then it's not going to know which ones are where and how many rows in which rows are where. If you ever have to, to mess with that or do any diagnostics, make sure you come in here and you tell it which ones are where. That's letter G, so let's go down to our letter H. 
based on what we've told it for our implement spacing, don't ever check this box unless it truly is a single rank machine. That can cause a lot of problems. Uh, but for this example, it's going to be a seven and a half inch, 40, 40 inch drill. And again, that's telling us our, our half width, half width disconnects. So let's go to our population. So this is where we, we set our population and these are our alarms. If we want to go, say, 10% over population, if we get greater than 10%, it's going to alarm at us. 10% is a pretty standard number that, that a lot of guys use, and it's really dependent on the guy and which, what product you're putting down. But you can go and you can customize that, so that way it's, it'll show up red on your planner at a glance and let you know, hey, you're above whatever percent the, the target population. This next box is population adjust is pretty important. And what this is, so we've gone out, we've set our, our drill, we have adjusted our transmission, we verified by a catch bag that we are putting down the right amount, but let's say our display does not reflect that correct number we can come right here to our population adjust and we can change that so that way on our main run page our population right here reflects the correct amount that we're physically putting down. Changing this number does not change the transmission setting on our seater it's just to reflect on our display what's actually happening on our back on our tool. That's the only time we would mess with this number right here if you look in your owner's manual, it has you divide what actually puts down by what it should, and that way you'd put in a percent to correct, basically, for, uh, for amount that your display is off. Down here at the bottom, this is our speed selection. So, whether we're running off GPS speed or radar, we need to make sure that that reflects correctly. If we go to letter I, these are our totals. It's pretty straightforward on a 1990 cart, but stop your recording. We'd come to this page, zero it out. Go to J, which is our diagnostics. This is, is good for you to know about. And our system readings, this implement switch right here tells us up or down. That's pretty important. We're not going to plant and paint if we do not see the implement switch recognizing up and down. Lift the plane all the way up, it should say up. You put it down, it should say down. Left, right clutches, if you're suspecting one is not working correctly, you can come in here and it's, it's going to tell you if it's engaged or not engaged. So go and flip your toggle switch on your, your black box and that's going to tell you. We need to have a speed in order to have a, a rate show up on our main blockage page. So if our radar is, is off and it's, it's giving us an incorrect speed, it's going to throw our rate off. So this is a page where we can go to, to see exactly what, what speed it's picking up. From here, this is more for a technician maybe, but it's going to show software versions for particular modules. We need to make sure there's power to it. So some diagnostics for your particular controllers that are back on your hair seater. Next, let's go to test. So this is a, an easy test to do, but this is a roll call for all of your blockage sensors. You hit that box and it goes through and it senses whether the, the sensor is there. You can run this test and it'll come out successful, but it doesn't mean you don't have a problem. It's kind of like roll call at school. They can, you can say that you're there in the classroom, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're all there. Again, it might recognize the sensors there, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily always working correctly. So, basic, basic diagnostics. That's everything that we need to go over and understand for setting up our, our 1990 cart. If you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of us.